This is the story of the terrible Santorini tsunami of 1956 during the solar maximum cycle number 19. Isn't that a strange coincidence? Especially because we're in the solar maximum number 25 right now and Santorini just had thousands of earthquakes, including a 5.1 magnitude right now. Can history be repeated? The summer heat lingers over the Aegean, making the waters shimmer like molten silver. Life on Amorgos is simple but demanding. Fishermen haul their catches before dawn, farmers till their land under the punishing sun, and the elderly sit in the shade, recounting stories of the past. The wind carries the scent of salt and thyme across the island's hills. Tourists, though not many, have arrived to marvel at the Cora's whitewashed homes and the monastery of Hosovio Tissa clinging to the cliffs. No one anticipates the silent menace lurking beneath the sea. A few unusual signs creep into daily life. Fishermen report that fish are behaving erratically, darting away from familiar waters. The goats on the hills seem restless, bleating in the night. In the early hours, some villagers claim they felt the earth tremble ever so slightly, but they dismiss it as imagination or the shifting of the wind. It is just after midnight, and the island sleeps under a star-strewn sky. A few tavernas still have patrons, their voices murmuring over glasses of ouzo. In Catapola, the harbor waters are eerily still. The old fisherman, Giorgos, frowns at the unnatural silence. The sea is too calm, as if holding its breath. A thunderous roar rips through the tranquility, shaking the very foundation of Amorgos. The island convulses as if caught in the grip of a vengeful god. Houses crack and crumble, stone walls collapse into dust. Families wake in terror, their screams swallowed by the deafening groans of the earth. The cliffs tremble, sending boulders crashing into the sea. The monastery of Hosoviotisa, standing defiant for centuries, shudders as pieces of its walls break away. On the streets, people stagger out of their homes, clutching each other. In the villages of Tholaria and Egiali, the destruction is immediate. Roofs cave in, and dust clouds billow like ghosts rising from the wreckage. Fires spark from toppled oil lamps, adding to the chaos. But the worst is yet to come. A deadly silence follows the quake. The sea, once retreating, now surges forward with monstrous intent. The first wave is small, barely noticeable. But within minutes, a wall of water, towering, merciless, races toward the shore. In Catapola, residents watch in horror as boats are lifted like toys and smashed against the docks. People scream warnings, but there is little time to escape. The tsunami crashes upon the harbor, swallowing homes, sweeping away fishing boats, dragging people into its churning depths. The force is unimaginable. What the earthquake spared, the sea now claims. On other islands, including Astipalaya, Naxos, and even as far as Crete, the waves arrive with lesser but still devastating force. Those near the shores of Santorini watch in terror as the sea surges inland, flooding homes and streets. The first light of dawn reveals a transformed landscape, one of sorrow and ruin. In Amorgos, survivors emerge from the rubble, calling out for missing loved ones. Some find their homes reduced to piles of stone, while others wade through the wreckage searching for anything salvageable. The smell of salt and dust fills the air, and the wails of the grieving echo across the hills. The once beautiful harbor of Catapola is unrecognizable. Boats lie shattered along the shore, their wooden remains tangled with debris. A mother searches frantically for her child, her cries piercing the morning hush. Nearby, Giorgos, the fisherman, kneels by the ruins of his taverna. 
his wrinkled hands sifting through broken plates and splintered wood. The island is not alone in its suffering. Reports trickle in from other islands, each one a testament to nature's wrath. At sea, a ferry that had been traveling between islands barely survived the monstrous waves, its passengers huddled in terror. Along the coastline of Crete, fishermen gather on the cliffs, staring in disbelief at the water's devastation. Help is on its way, but slowly. Boats carrying aid from Athens struggle against rough waters, their passengers unaware of the full scale of the disaster. Survivors huddle together in makeshift camps, tending to the injured with whatever supplies they can find. The death toll is rising, and stories of miraculous survival and heartbreaking loss spread among the islanders. An old woman, trapped beneath the beams of her home, is rescued after hours of digging. A young boy is found clinging to a floating door, his tiny hands blistered from salt and splinters. Others are not so lucky. Entire families have vanished beneath the sea's fury. The Greek government declares a state of emergency. Aid workers arrive, bringing medicine, food, and tents. Engineers assess the damage, marking unstable structures for demolition. The islanders, though battered, refuse to be broken. They begin the slow process of rebuilding, brick by brick, memory by memory. Priests hold mass in the open air, their prayers for the lost rising with the smoke of burning wreckage. Fishermen, those who still have boats, return to the sea, casting their nets in defiance of the disaster. The monastery, though scarred, still stands, a symbol of resilience against nature's fury. Will the Santorini volcano wake up? We just had a magnitude 5.2 earthquake struck the Greek Aegean Islands, marking the latest event in an ongoing series of seismic disturbances that began on February 1st. This earthquake occurred approximately 17 miles west-southwest of the island of Amorgos and was notable as the second strongest quake in less than two weeks. The impacts of the seismic events are being felt not only in terms of ground shaking, but also in the psychological toll they take on the community. The constant tremors have caused anxiety and fear among the populace, leading to a state of emergency being declared for Santorini. As we continue to monitor developments in this situation, it is clear that the Greek Aegean islands are facing a challenging period. If the situation keeps getting worse, there's a high risk of an eruption. It is a reminder of the power of nature, and the need for preparedness in the face of these unpredictable events.